chapter 23 verse 18 says surely there is an end your expectation shall not be cut off there is always an end to any agenda in life and the big game is this strength proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 say if you faint in the day of adversity it is not that the adversity is stronger than you it is that your strength is small and your strength comes from the word of god and from the holy spirit the Hemer chapter 8 verse 10 says the joy of the lord is our strength psalm chapter 16 verse 11 says in the presence of god as the holy spirit there is fullness of joy when you begin to acquaint yourself and keep abreast with the ministry and person of the Holy Spirit, the result or the resultant effect is joy. And that joy is your strength. The Holy Spirit opens your eyes to the Word of God. And the Word of God begins to, to envelope you, begin to light you up. So that is the way it is. Those that wait upon the Lord... They shall always be strong. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall not faint. Why? Waiting upon the Lord is a reality. When you are waiting upon the Lord, you are hanging on with the Holy Spirit. You are eating the Word of God. It's not an absentia thing. You just they are doing nothing. No. You are waiting upon the Lord. That word wait means that you are taking in inner strength, ineptitude which is patience in other words that is the thing that allows you to see the end of the matter james chapter 1 verse 5 he says, if any man lacks wisdom let him ask god and it will give the wisdom there is the ability to see the end of the matter god sees the end from the beginning before he starts he knows the end and when you can see the end you are encouraged you are strengthened because you know that everything that is happening now is going to end like this i pray today that you receive the grace to begin to get in tandem and subscribe with the person and minister of the holy spirit without the holy spirit one becomes hopeless and helpless on earth they did it you need the holy spirit and i want to tell you this in life in life you must know the end of a matter don't you ever give up look at the picture on the screen that is wonderful the picture on the screen shows us that in all ways that you are showing in all ways that you are you have something to do with god that the enemy cannot cannot joke with you the reason is this the picture shows a bird that wants to swallow a frog but look at the frog the frog saw a way out and held the neck the neck of the bird 
Don't you ever give up. There is a way out. And look at the word right there. Look at sweat. The bird will have no other choice than to vomit the frog and the frog will disappear. That is the issue. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. It says there is always a way out. You see, in every temptation, in every problem, God has prepared a way out so that you can be able to bear it and escape it. That's what it is. So don't be afraid. Don't give up. Don't allow anything to push you down, to set you down. There is a way out of every problem. Just cool down and you will see the way out. And then take advantage of it. There is no problem that will never come to you. According to the word in that first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that does not have a way out. And the way out is your way of escape. Look for it. Don't give up. That's the way it works. And you, you will not make an unpardonable mistake. That is the way. But don't you ever give up in the affairs of life. A man bought uh, a farm and he was farming there. And as he was farming there, the things were not growing. He was not making any profit. And they came to check up the land and they said to him, this place, the reason it's not growing is that it has diamond. And then he now paid so much to get people to come and begin to explore the land. And they kept digging and digging and digging. He spent so much. He took loan. They digged and digged and digged. At the end, they said, there is no diamond here. There is no diamond here. And the man had to give up, sold that place to another person, and then used the money to pay up his loans and used the money to go and buy another land somewhere where they say they have gold. Now, the person that bought this place just began to dig just two feet not even up to two feet he said one feet to two feet he hit diamond and that place is one of the biggest uh, diamond concentration in the world so he gave up just at the brink of a breakthrough i pray you don't ever give up nothing speaks at the beginning everything speaks at the end and you must endure to the end. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. He said, to him that endures to the end, receive the benefits. To him that endures to the end, is saved. So if you give up, you are not saved. You are not, you are in trouble. That is where it is. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. He said, don't give up, don't faint. Because if you faint, you will not reap. So for you to start and to give up means... You have already uh, given away even the labor you are put in. And that is the way it works. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, he said, Make sure you are unmovable. Remain steadfast. Why? Because God rewards your labor. But it is at the end. Habakkuk chapter 2, I want to read from verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. It does not speak at the beginning. The end, note this, number one is the speaking point. Number two, remember I said there is a way out to every problem. From what you have seen, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13, and from the picture we showed. And you can understand that. So you must wait to the end. Those, the speaking point is at the end. Listen, you can be celebrated when you are in a race, running. But it's only the one that finishes and wins the race that gets the prize. So there are many celebrations on the race, but the prize is for those who finish. So people can be celebrating you now and then you give up. You will not get the prize. That's the way it works. Don't give up. Don't you ever give up in the affairs of life. That man gave up and lost out in having the biggest diamond settlement. So, you understand it, he now says, But at the end he shall speak and not lie. Do it tarry, do it tarry, wait for it. 
because it will surely come it will not tarry so wait for it that's the way it works number three the prize is given at the end of the race look at what first corinthians chapter 9 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 please don't you ever give up the things will come to make you to give up be resilient be tacity whatever you are doing let your eye be like a flint be focused matthew chapter 6 verse 22 he says the light the light of the body is the eye and if your eye be single your whole body shall be full of light that is if you are focused if you are focused don't rem remember that preparation is key if you have not prepared you have already prepared to fail if you have not planned you have already planned to fail that is the important thing Luke chapter 14 verse 28 he said who is it that built a tower without sitting down first to count the cost to know whether he be able to finish unless he starts and then fails and become a mockery so you see that preparation is key don't just run into anything sit down count the cost get requisite information feasibility studies about where you want to go ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 he said the labor of the foolish disturbs other people why because he does not know how to get to the city you settle down to get the how to plan before you start don't just jump into anything pay the price to plan then as you keep planning god will be expanding it to you as you keep moving it will be expanding it to you You'll be getting a clearer picture you plan in prayers you plan in getting information you understand look at those who have done the same thing you want to do how they did it but it's not exactly that you're doing the same pattern because god can give you a different pattern you are only getting requisite information knowledge and you will run away from scorners from failure those who will feed you with poisons that will discourage you you don't need to stay with them because discouragement is a weapon that makes people to give up it will lead you to depression and a lot of people commit suicide the rate of suicide is high now because of depression i could feel with that woman i was listening to her a couple of days ago that the son committed suicide why because the son was frustrated in school he never knew that the lecturers were talking rubbish to the son and the son was dying in silence the son saw himself as a no good person and listened to the woman. The son couldn't talk to the mother, couldn't communicate to her what she was going through. And she didn't spend enough time with the son. She didn't know that people were discouraging the son until the son committed suicide. And from the suicide note, beloved, watch it. There are those in the marketplace. There are those in skills. There are those in corporate bodies. There are those in the church. They are not there representing God. They are discouraging people. They are liars, rumor mongers. They are, they are gossiping to discourage people. And they are leading people into depression. And when such people take useless decisions, you understand? Especially making an eternal decision by a temporary situation. Just like Esau, who made a permanent decision by a temporary situation of hunger. And that is what a lot of people do without, and at the end of the day, they regret. I pray that will not be your portion. That's when the multitude of quality counsel, there is safety. Don't hang out with people that will discourage you, that will pull you down, that will bust your balloon. I'll hang out with people that when you hang out with them, no matter what you are going through, when you leave them, you feel like, wow, I'm going to handle, handle the world. How would you know such people that bust your balloon? Those who talk about people. Those who carry gossips and rumors about what people have done wrong. People continue to do wrong. No man is perfect. So why do you talk about them? Are you not doing wrong yourself? So don't use such things to discourage and destroy other lives. You will pay for it one day, sister. You will pay for it one day, brother. The people went, the Bible said, the early church went from house to house, breaking bread, inspiring one another, sharpening one another, iron sharpens iron, preparing people for eternity with God and to live an exemplary life on earth, how to walk that hard with their own hands. 
And now people go from house to house carrying gossip, office to office carrying gossip, market to marketplace carrying gossip. Run away from such people. Gossips and rumor mongers are agents of discouragement and depression. You don't need them. People can, people must always do something wrong. Nobody is perfect. No perfect church, no perfect organization. No, only the true spiritual church of God is perfect. But the church is like a laundry house where everybody come. Paul says, we are working out our salvation. I'm working out my own salvation in fear and trembling. Both your pastor, both your general here, everybody is working out his own salvation in fear and trembling. Nobody is perfect. Your own is Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. If anyone is overtaken by any fault, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness so that you will not fall into the same example. So anyone that is talking about other people is not spiritual at all. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church. You are an agent of discouragement. Verse 2, he said, let us bear one another's burden. That is the way it is. A real child of God bears one another's burden. You don't talk people down. You don't throw your dirty leanings out. Aaron and Miriam did the same thing. They did it and they had to suffer. The, the person they were talking about, uh, Moses, the, the Moses kept moving forward. So yeah, they are talking about people. They are moving forward. You, you are down. And you are looking, putting up somebody's light will not make your own brighter. There is no destiny that can write off another destiny. Don't compare yourself with other people. The Bible says those who compare themselves with one another, they are not wise. Because what you do is that you are a, a, an agent of discouragement. And most people, you wouldn't know that you have made them to leave the church, to discourage them. Luke chapter 11, verse 52. He said, Woe unto you lawyers. You have the key of knowledge. You did not enter in. Those who want to enter in, you push them away. So there are people like that. They know the truth. They know the truth of men of God. They know the truth of the church. They will say it. But what they are saying are the dirty things which they imagine, which they have decorated themselves. And they use it to discourage people. And they are removing people from the church. People are getting discouraged, depressed every day. Whatever you sow, you will reap. You will reap it, surely. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. You will reap it. We are supposed to inspire people, not to expire them. And whatever you say is a fruit you have sown. And you are going to get the harvest someday. Please be an agent to make people to move forward in their lives and their vocations. Not to give up. The Bible says here, as we are going back, it says there, verse 24, verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, look at what it says. Know you not that they which run in a race, run all, but one received the prize, so run that you may obtain run that you may obtain that is the reason and it is at the end you obtain the prize in second timothy chapter 2 verse 5 look at what the bible says so you have to run so that you don't get shared on the way celebrated on the way and you don't obtain the prize there are a lot of celebrations on the way but the truth of the matter is this that until you get to the end then you don't receive anything please help people to get to the end don't expire them that is the way it works look at that man that i learned look at the person in front the, uh, made a mistake and thought that that was the finishing line he was coming second but when he got there he pushed the man to finish because you are being celebrated on the way does not make any difference help people to finish that man received the prize but this other man that helped him to finish is being celebrated and noise all over the world help people to finish that man received a better prize you understand that is the issue he helped somebody to finish when you help people to finish it's a seed you have sown don't push people away don't push them down don't push them you do that you think you can push people and think you can ride upon them no that is what many people are doing they are biting the hands that feed them they are rewarding people that helped them with evil that is wrong you are seeing a seed proverbs chapter 17 verse 13 he says those who reward good with evil evil shall not depart from their house the person that is helping you have weaknesses and is helping you you are talking about the person weakness you are not telling people of the help that person has done to you in life you are bringing evil in your household and you know it that you are not living in peace please change today 
Stop expiring people. Inspire people. Let people don't give up because of you. Understand that. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. He says, And if a man also strive for masteries, if a man also strive for masteries, if a man, a man, a man also strive, that is compete in athletics, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. So the crown is at the end and you have to run lawfully, not pushing people down, not taking advantage of people, not talking people down. You have to do these things with love and joy. Then you get your prize. The strength you give to others determines the strength God will give to you. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8, the Bible says, Whatsoever good you do to another man, the same will God do unto you. It's important for you to know these things. They are very simple. You don't stop. Jacob did not stop. For nine hours he held the angel. He said, bless me, I will not let you go. I'm not giving up. And at the end of the day, he got a change of name, change of destiny. His authentic real self came to life. If he had given up, then he wouldn't have gotten that. You don't give up. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, he said, to him that overcometh, will I give to eat the truth of life. To him that overcome it, to him that endure to the end. But those who give up don't ever get it. Second uh, Romans chapter 4, look at what the Bible says in verse 20, talking about Abraham, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. He said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't stagger at all. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Keeping, he was thanking God. He was not looking at his body or the circumstances and what people say. He didn't give up. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that that which he had promised, he was able also to perform. God, he made sure he did not make any mistake to give up on the journey. He kept doing that. And then at the end of the day, he is today celebrated. And I pray that you understand that it's not by talking. Abraham's blessing is by doing. If you do what Abraham did with a clear heart, a clear conscience, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6, he said, doing the will of God from the heart. That's the way it works, from the heart. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 21, who are these that engage their heart? to approach me. God is interested in your, what your heart is saying. Not those who draw to him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. That is the way it is. Amos chapter 5 verse 23. He said, take away the melody of your music because it is noise to me. It is disturbing me. Take it away. John chapter 4 verse 24. The Bible says from verse 23, he said, God seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. So worship him in spirit and in truth from the heart who engage their hearts to approach God. So that is where the issue is, not being a psychophant, a hypocrite. You understand? And when you do these things, you cannot lack the strength of God. And you need the strength of God in this journey. Proverbs 24, 10. You Proverbs 24, 10 say, if you faint in the day of adversity, there must always be the day of adversity. He say you're fainting not because of the adversity, because your strength is small. May you receive strength on the journey. John chapter 8 verse 39 says, look at this, beautiful. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. It is not to say Abraham is my father, God is my father. It is the doing the will of God from the heart that gets the issue done. That's where the strength comes. That way, you don't see what the devil is doing. You don't see the distractions of the devil. You don't see all the mockeries of the devil. And then you keep going. I remember, I remember somehow, somebody came to a man of God. And he said, a woman, he said, I'm leaving this church. I'm leaving the church. I'm no longer coming to the church. Look at the behavior of people. Look at how they are behaving. Look at, look at that sister. Look at this brother. 
See, the Apostle Church is a laundry house. We come to hear the word of God that is able to cleanse us, to wash us, and we become better fellows. So we should be able to make room for others' deficiencies and to pray for them that they will overcome also and not to ridicule them, to run them down. The Bible says, examine yourself, not others. And this woman complained. And the, the pastor said to her, wise pastor, he said, uh, 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 please, ma, please, I'm not stopping you from leaving. But before you leave, I want you to do something. He said, what is that? The pastor filled up a glass with water to the brain. He said, take this glass of water. This is a prophetic action. Please don't joke with it. Let nothing drop. Go round this church two times and meet me. Then I'll pray for you before you leave. The woman went round first, second, and came back with the glass of water and nothing poured away. The woman first said, the pastor said, nothing poured away from the water? The woman said, yes. He said, why? He said, I made sure I was concentrating. He said, did you hear what they were doing in the church? Did you hear the choir practicing? She said, no. Did you hear uh, the other group? The woman said no. He said, why didn't you hear them? He said, because she was concentrating in the water. So she didn't hear what was happening. And she was able to go around twice and come. And the man said, that is what God wants you to do. Your focus is on God when you come to church and not on other people. The other people means you pray for them so that they can change, not to see who the wrong things that they are doing. You serve God from your heart. No man is a standard. You can have people challenging you in your work, but God remains your standard. That if they fall, you pray for them and you are still moving. That's the way it works. There is no excuse to say in giving up. I want to read these two scriptures for somebody here, and then I believe that the Almighty God shall continue to strengthen us. Luke chapter 9, verse 62 says, if he say he that puts his hand in the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom that is one major thing you don't look back keep moving let your eye be like a flint hebrew chapter 10 verse 35 hebrew chapter 10 i pray you don't give up in the affairs of life continue and at the end of the day you'll be happy remember that it is at the end that it speaks, not at the beginning, not in the middle. Endure to reach the end. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 38. It says, Wow, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, draw back, draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If any man draw back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him. God says, if you draw back, my soul shall not have pleasure in you. So those who give up, they grieve God. I pray you'll never give up again. You'll not draw back again. Let no man's attitude make you to draw back. Make sure you continue. Don't say that you are drawing back in what you are doing with God because of A, because of B, because of C. Continue. Continuity is the game. John chapter 8 verse 31. See, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples in, indeed. You don't start and stop. You start to continue. I pray you finish well. I pray you finish strong. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, the Bible says there was so much vexations. The people suffered many things. But in verse 12, they came together to make up their mind. They were willing to walk. They had a mind to walk, like in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. They had a mind to walk. They came to walk. They came to serve the Lord. They entered into covenant with God. And in verse 15, the Bible says, God gave them rest round about. And as they continued with that covenant, verse 19 says, there was no law, more war with them. Beloved, as you continue, you will enter a battle-free zone in your life. That's the way it works. You will encounter rest around about because that is all you need. And that is when you begin, people begin to see the great decorations upon your life that they will know that you serve the living God. No one, 
No vision, nothing ever speaks at the beginning. It all speaks at the end. Wait for it. Endure. Endure no matter whatever happens, don't give up. Keep serving God with the clearness of heart, in good conscience. We, the Bible says, we some people don't have and they have made a shipwreck of their faith. In clean conscience before God and also before man. No hatred, no bitterness, no unforgiveness in your heart. No sin locking up in your heart. You are eating up the word of God, eating it voraciously. Wait to the Holy Ghost opening your eyes. You will arrive well and i see you ending up strong and very powerful that's why i need to pray for you because you are going to enter battle free zone he said there was no more war verse 19 no more war again if god says no more war it means no more war you are stepping into that place there will be no more war asian battles are expiring this time around in your life and in your family no more war no more battles even the ones that will come will just be something you will write prosperously majesty that will give you your needed des testimonies i see you ending well i see you ending strong and it is eternity with god at last i pray that you will not be sitting in the affairs of life again i pray you will never give up in the walk with god i pray that my god will forever continue to show you his mercy and his glory i pray that no evil shall come near you and every ancestral secret retarding your progress i command them to be revealed to you today and receive the power to do something about them in the name of jesus and every secret activity currently affecting your life i command them to be exposed and to be disgraced in the name of jesus and i pray today every secret you need to know to excel spiritually mentally financially in all areas of life i command them to be released to you in the name of jesus they shall be revealed to you in the name of jesus and i'm praying today every secret hidden in the marine kingdom affecting your promotion your elevation your lifting i command them to be exposed and disgraced today in the name of jesus and every secret hidden in the satanic archive crippling your elevation i command them to be exposed and disgraced in the name of jesus and any secret you need to know about your environment about your family line about your place of birth about your village about your father's house about your mother's house i decree today they shall be revealed to you and your life will begin to move forward in the name of jesus i decree every secret you need to know about your father's lineage i decree shall be revealed to you in the name of jesus you shall not make unpardonable mistakes in the name of jesus you shall not be relegated to the junkyard in the name of jesus i pray for you today in the matchless name of jesus that it is absolutely well with you remember it is loving god loving people touching lives positively and serving our god I am fresh fire. We are missionaries connecting the world with God's love and presence. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and he has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.